everybody. 大家好 I welcome you to J Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. Halloween is in a month, and what better way to set the mood than stories of the supernatural? So let's get started. Throughout Chinese history, we have an overabundance of strange and scary traditional beliefs. The whole of the seventh lunar month is the Hungry Ghost Festival, or Ghost Month. This is when the gates of hell fully open, and the spirits are permitted to roam the earth for the month. But surprisingly enough, other than sutras or religious text, we don't have any historical literature that focuses around ghost stories. Except one, strange tales from a Chinese studio, Liao Jai Zhi Yi, or known just as Liao Jai by Pu Songling, is perhaps the most popular and only literature that features anthologies around spirits, immortals, ghosts, and demons. This work is a collection of anthologies that depict an environment where the supernatural plays a very large role. In the world of the living, painted skin Hua Pi talks of a man seduced by a beautiful young woman, only to find out that she is a demon in disguise, waiting to devour his heart. An otherworldly examination is a story about how a government official was tested on a plane not of ours to take on the role of becoming a city god. And the list goes on: stories about prophetic foxes, haunted houses, and so on. And the length of these stories can range between half a page long to several pages long, each strange and intriguing in their own right. Don't be fooled by this collection of short stories. While appearing as nothing more than stories meant to chill its readers. Their themes were a criticism of society at that time. One of the main themes were complaints about the imperial exam, which was often filled with bribery and cheating. We see this theme in stories like Si Wen Lang, Wang Zi An, and Ye Shen. These stories reveal how scholars were ruined by the imperial exam. Pu Songling also spoke out for the poor in his work. Speaking out against power and privilege given to individuals by the government, the cricket, Chu Zhi, Xi Fang Ping, and Shang Shan Guan are good examples of this narrative. This is why you might notice something very interesting in the text. Most stories are about immortals, demons, spirits, and ghosts. Obviously, they're supernatural beings, but. They're not the obvious antagonist. Oftentimes, they are depicted as kind and generous, while it's the humans that are sinful and suffering karmic retribution. Much like the Grimm's fairy tales, each tale has a lesson to teach, and hopefully, readers can learn from their lessons. Pu Songling, the author of Strange Tales from a Chinese Studio, had a very interesting life. Born to a very poor family, his goal was like most educated men of that dynasty. During the time that Pu Songling was alive, the life aim of most young men were to pass the imperial exam and become a government official. Pu Songling did have a good start. He received the Shou Tai degree from the imperial exam at the age of 18. Unfortunately, that's where his career as a government official ended. He would fail the next round and many, many times after. He would not receive the Gongshen degree until the age of seventy-one, not because he passed the exam at that age, but because of his achievement in literature. He wrote so many short stories that it got to a point that one of his friends wrote a poem. Just to tell him to stop writing pointless stories, he lived a very impoverished life and would escape into his fantasies when real life and disappointments became too heavy to bear. We say that every Chinese intellectual has a Liao Jai in their heart, but what is Liao Jai? It's the name of the ancient studio located in the Shandong Province, 
which was owned by the writer Pu Songling and was where he wrote his famous works. This is also why Strange Tale from a Chinese Studio is also just called Liao Zhai. Unfortunately, his work would not be published until 1740, 25 years after his death. Why did it take so long? Pu Songling was so poor that he could not afford to publish his own work. He left the world at the age of 74, leaving behind almost 500 spine-tingling narratives. The dynasty in which the works were written is very important. The spiritual entities featured in the work were not the creations of Pu Songling. Chinese culture has always believed in supernatural beings and spirits since the beginning of our culture. Pu Songling utilized these creatures as satire for the political discourse of his time. The stories were written during the Qing Dynasty, but Pu Songling was born during the last couple years of the Ming Dynasty, meaning that his lifetime was during the beginning of the Qing Dynasty. He literally Witness the changing of a dynasty and the constant turmoil that came with it. Riots and anti-Manchurian protests were a norm, and you see this reflected in his writing. When I tell you that Strange Tales from a Chinese Studio is iconic, I'm not lying. It is so iconic that many modern Chinese horror and romance have taken major influence from it. Countless modern media have used the stories as premise for their movies and dramas. Two of my favorite films are Painted Skin and Painted Skin 2, Hua Pi, and they take direct influence from the story with the same name in the novel. The story of Nie Xiao Qian has been adapted many, many times. One of the most famous adaptation is A Chinese Ghost Story starring Leslie Chung from 1987. The thing is, these works were written 200 years ago. The Qing Dynasty didn't have the internet, they didn't have fast travel like we do. This was a much simpler time, which means what was scary to them isn't to us. Strange Tales is nothing like the horror we see in modern times. Many of these stories wouldn't even scare modern children. The thing is, this could even be said though for many well-known Western classics. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, Dracula by Bram Stoker, and Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. In the next video, I will be sharing some of the more famous and popular stories from Strange Tales from a Chinese Studio. But in the spirit of Halloween, I will read one for you today as a teaser to set you on your journey for the spooky season. A Fatal Joke The schoolmaster Sun Jingxia once told the story. A certain fellow of the locality let us call him X, was killed by bandits during one of their raids. His head flopped down onto his chest. When the bandits had gone, the family came to recover the corpse for burial, but they detected the faintest trace of breathing, and upon closer examination, saw that the man's windpipe was not quite severed. A finger's breath remained. So they carried him home, supporting the head carefully, and after a day and a night, he began to make a moaning noise. They fed him minute quantities of food with a spoon and chopsticks, and after six months he was fully recovered. Ten years later, he was sitting and talking with two or three of his friends when one of them cracked a hilarious joke and they all burst out laughing. X was rocking back and forth in a fit of hysterical laughter when suddenly the old sword wound burst open and his head fell to the ground in a pool of blood. His friend examined him and this time he was well and truly dead.
his father decided to bring charges against the man who had told the joke. But the jokester's friends collected some money together and succeeded in buying him off. The father buried his son and dropped the charges. I have a teespring if you'd like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of. So please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. What do you guys think? What is the scariest literature in your culture? What is the most iconic? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. Also, leave a comment if you can. It really does help out small channels like mine. You can also let me know what topics you'd like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Jay Palace Yamingo. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, happy Halloween! Bye-bye!